I think I'm going to start today just by inviting Sheldon to give uh, just a little introduction uh, about the book. Um, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much for having us, Jamie. Um, so the book, the book uh, took us a little while to get done, um, but I think we moved pretty quickly. Um, it took us about two years and uh, it started when Derek and I uh, were working on a special issue on Lacan and race for uh, psychoanalysis, culture and society. And, um, you know, doing that project introduced us to people like uh, Michelle Stevens and others who were writing on race. But what we found was that there wasn't too much being done on the topic of Lacan and race. Um, you know, around the year 200, there were a number of publications that focused on psychoanalysis and race. There was Christopher Lane's important book, uh, the, Psych the, the Psychoanalysis of Race. There was Anne Cheng's um, The Melancholy of Race. Um, there was Elizabeth Abel's, um, uh, what was the title? Female Subjects in Black and White. And importantly for Lacanians, um, in the year 2000, uh, Kalpanasis Audrey Crooks's book, Desire and Whiteness, came out. But after that period, it seemed as though people were writing less and less about race, especially from a Lacanian perspective. So there was this gap that we wanted to fill. And um, um, you know, the, the book introduces, uh, the, the book focuses on sort of three uh, components of race. We focus on race, uh, racism and racial identification. And we try to explain those from a Lacanian perspective. Our sense is that Lacanian theory is really rich, it's really complex. Um, it has a long history rooted in Freudian theory. And it has, it has an ethics that allows it to be applied um, very fittingly to studies of race. But um, I would say that the primary effort of the book is to bring Lacan to race and to bring race to Lacan. Our sense is that, um, you know, the critical work that has been done on race hasn't deeply engaged psychoanalysis. And the critical work that has been done on Lacanian theory, and especially Lacanian theory of the subject, hasn't talked about race. And so the book itself culminates with a set of chapters that try to reimagine the Lacanian subject as a subject of race. I, I, I mean, I'm quite interested in, in what you said that it, I, I actually didn't realize it, was take, it had taken about two years to write. I was wondering if, um, if the events of last summer with the murder of George, George Floyd, which sort of shook the entire world, if that, I don't know, shed a different light on, on how you had written your papers, if it made you change or question anything, because it brought out, the, the good in some, but it also brought out the very worst in others. And um, yeah, no, I'd be interested to hear what you, what your experience of sort of encountering that or uh, your experience of writing in light of all of that um, was. So uh, one of uh, my areas of interest is literature and um, a lot of the pieces in this book come from different disciplines. And um, you know, one of my favorite books is Toni Morrison's uh, Beloved. And in Beloved, there's a character there who says, it's always now. And she's referring to slavery. She's referring to, uh, to the repetition of the traumatic past. So there's a way in which um, what we're dealing with is something that is consistent, something that's 
always present, always repeated. And um, I think for me that reaffirmed the need for psychoanalysis. Um, at one point in one of the seminars, Lacan says that psychoanalysis is about traumas and their repetitions. And what we see in race is the repetition of this traumatic past. And um, more and more, what, what we found in the pieces was a shift to um, a shift away from historical and social explanations for racism and more interest in discussions of the real, discussions of the drive, discussions that position race and racism along a circular path, along a rep repetitive path, along something that is somehow more insistent and more omnipresent. And, and I think that that actually is part of the value of approaching race from the perspective of psychoanalysis, because it gets at what is outside of the symbolic, but yet still structures the symbolic. Um, most other theories don't do that. And maybe also just to add um, to what Sheldon is saying, you know, very basic premise, obviously a foundational premise, pretty much of all psychoanalysis is that of subjective division. And, um, you know, I think we see that uh, very powerfully in what would appear to many of us to be, we're supposed to be in this, you know, uh, progressive uh, era, whereas we're still seeing things which, which seem to be um, emergences of an older, apparently transcended racist history. Um, so you could say that in as much as psychoanalysis is always attentive to those moments of disruption, those disjunctures, that division, both subjectively and historically, where one finds a consistency of, of anti-Blackness, despite many measures and emblems and suggestions that the opposite is the case, you could say that's precisely why psychoanalysis is an invaluable resource in terms of thinking racism. I suppose since we're since we're on that subject, I suppose I quite like to ask uh, a question um, that sort of interests me. Is you know how how does Lacanian or how does analysis or how does Lacan differ to other psychoanalytic schools of thought on conversations of race? It's a great question, um, and it's an important one. Uh, on the one hand. <laughs> Sorry, a truck is driving across. Um, on, on the one hand, I'm always a little bit aware of, of trying to, to create a, a sense of Lacanian exceptionalism, because I think Lacanian theory is often at its best when it's in dialogue with other forms of psychoanalysis. So, so let's just keep that in mind. But having said that, um, there are, for me, the answer to the question is that Lacanian theory gives us a series of very distinctive concepts and a distinctive style of theorizing about psychical life. And what was really helpful in thinking about the book, in looking at the contents and the contributors of the book, is that work of conceptual refinement. So you could say that notions precisely such as the real that Sheldon has already mentioned, the notion of the lamella, which is uh, apparent in Michelle Stevens's chapter, which is a kind of uh, Lacanian invention to think libido, the, the paradoxes of the concept of libido, the notion of the big other, as opposed to imaginary counterparts, um, the way Lacan thinks fantasy in relationship to drive, um, notions of the master signifier, these type of ideas, they give us a distinct uh, conceptual array of explanatory means. And of course, the other big one, which I haven't yet mentioned, is the, is the notion of jouissance. Of course, we could link all of these concepts back to other forms of psychoanalysis, jouissance is, you know, obviously libidinal enjoyment, so on and so forth. But they do a different type of conceptual work, I think, within the remit of, of, of Lacanian theorization. And let me just add one more, more comment to that. Um, and and it's, it's wonderful to be able to look across the chapters in the book and see how each chapter, in a way, does foreground uh, what I would say is a distinctively Lacanian attempt to grapple with, theorize, think some of these, these issues. Um, another one is the notion of, of sexuation. Sheldon's uh, chapter deals with that um, in a very impressive way. Um, but the further point I'd like to make is that 
what, what is also useful about Lacanianism here is that Lacanian theory often sets itself up precisely against a kind of psychological theorization. So what that means then is to give one pertinent example where some approaches to racism would want to think about it in terms of a kind of projection thesis, for example, or would want to locate it in terms of a kind of imaginary uh, dynamic or dialectic of me versus the other. Lacanian psychoanalysis is always a little bit circumspect about those kinds of conceptualizations. And it reaches for and tries to find a level of analysis and engagement, which doesn't become merely psychological. And I think that's, that's kind of crucial because just in terms of some of the earlier questions that have come up, um, Jamie, that you, were, that you were asking, is that we need to be able to utilize a form of psychoanalysis that thinks um, structural entities, fantasy at the level of, of societal um, formations, not merely at the level of the psychological. I'll just add, um, Jamie, that uh, I think that th the last part of what Derek said there is, uh, is particularly um, important for Derek's own essay. Um, Derek has two pieces in the in the book. He's so prolific that we had to add um, both of them. But one of his pieces is focused on um, ideology and the way that ideology is rooted in desire. And it really is a brilliant rereading of the kind of Marxist interpretation of ideology that comes out of the work of people like Althusser. But the reason I bring it up is because it, it's a way of thinking about the personal and the social in conjunction with each other. And I think um, that's one of the unique elements of Lacanian psychoanalytic theory. But I also want to, to um, I also want to stress that uh, even though we are deploying Lacanian theory, our major effort, or a major effort of the book is to rethink Lacanian theory. And so obviously Lacan didn't think of sexuation in terms of race. He didn't think of the lamella in terms of race. Um, but what does it mean to rethink Lacan through race? How does Lacan himself become modified? How does Lacanian psychoanalytic theory become more expansive, um, um, more, more reflective of the psychoanalytic subject? when we think in terms of race. I think that's that's the central question that's driving the, um, the theorizing in the text. Yeah, I mean, also just adding to, to what Sheldon had said, one of the exciting um, parts of working on the book was not just to do the Lacanian thing, but to see how there could be interesting conjunctions. So I've already mentioned the, the Afro-pessimism, um, Lacanian psychoanalysis one, but some of the chapters are also thinking um, about how to uh, do a kind of reciprocal engagement with Fanon as well as um, Lacan, for example. And uh, it's funny, you know, when we when we started working on the book, Sheldon and I were kind of realized that the Christopher Lane psychoanalysis of race book that had come out in whenever it was 1998, I think, or something. We we'd both been in grad school reading that book, and um, it was quite nice to think that we were kind of doing a follow up version of that. But as we were speaking you know, one also wonders what would be a kind of follow-up to this project. And just to reiterate what Sheldon is saying, not only is it important to use the resources of Lacanian psychoanalysis, but it's also crucial to be able to think how to put Lacanian psychoanalytic resources in a relationship of conjunction, of, of uh, reciprocation with other conceptual resources. And uh, Wayne Wapamuka's chapter also involves a little bit of um, Achille Mbembe, for example. So I think we're pretty proud of that, actually, not to do like on an isolation, but also to see how there could be these profitable um, uh, um, moments of conjunction between Lacanian psychoanalysis and other theories. And just while I'm on the topic, I mean, um, Sheldon was particularly good, I think, at also trying to facilitate this in the book, to think Lacan or Lacanian psychoanalysis in different historical locations and geographical locations, which I think is also crucial. And, and you know, we've got a number of chapters which try to do a little bit of that work. It was also important to us that um, 
the, the theory was complex, but yet still clear. And so we're dealing with really dense Lacanian concepts that are required for, you know, a, 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 a um, successful analysis of race, which in and of itself is a complex historical and psychic, um, um, psychic uh, apparatus of subjectivity. Um, but at the same time, what we did was we selected authors who could write clearly. Because, you know, the, the, the critique you always have of Lacanian theory is that, you know, it, it, it's abstract, it doesn't make sense, you have to sit there 10 hours trying to figure out what this person is saying, they're trying to emulate Lacan's style, and, you know, um, so we, we tried to avoid some of that, and we, we focused on clarity because we want the theory to make sense, we want the theory to be historicized, but at the same time, I, I think part of what um, part of what you always encounter in dealing with psychoanalytic theory is that you're talking simultaneously about historical instantiations of racism and psychic instantiations of racism. So you have to think both at the level of um, of the symbolic and at the level of the psychic. And we're trying to balance both of those in the text. Mm 